Welcome back to Backyard Boatworks. This is part two of a series of videos about working on the carburetors on your Honda BF series outboard motor. So in part one, I showed you how to quickly remove the full carb assembly from the engine. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to disassemble the carburetors and some things to look for that might be causing you to have some running issues. So once you get the carburetor assembly over to a clean working surface, you can start by removing the two 10 millimeter bolts that hold on the air box. So the next step is going to be removing the linkage. The first is the linkage that connects the throttle assemblies. Uh, be sure to keep the orientation correct when you put it back together. And the second is the linkage that controls the choke. Next, we're gonna remove the six bolts that hold the muffler plate to the front side of the carburetors. Take those out and set them aside. They are all the same size. So once the bolts are removed, now we're gonna separate the muffler plate from the front of the carburetors. And on the other side of this is a gasket. If this is the first time taking these carburetors apart, it's very likely you'll have to replace this. You could have some air leaks with this gasket, which would cause some running issues. So now the only thing holding the carburetors to the intake manifold are a couple fuel lines. So you can separate the fuel lines and the carbs will separate from the intake manifold. And next you're gonna to wanna to inspect the intake manifold gasket. Chances are you'll wanna replace this before putting it back together. Your fuel lines may be zip tied um, at the carburetor. So removing those zip ties will allow the carburetor to remove from the manifold. So the next piece you're gonna to want to inspect is called the insulator. And this is a small plastic spacer between the carb and the manifold. Pay particular attention to this because they can crack either around the screw holes or in other areas. This can cause a fuel leak, which I experienced the first time I did a carb job on this engine. Also be sure to check the quality of the gaskets. Uh, this is a piece that will very likely need to be replaced as well. When you're removing the carburetor from the manifold and the insulator separates from the carburetor, there's two small metal dowel type pieces that center the carburetor onto the manifold. Pay particular attention not to drop those or misplace them. It will make putting the carburetor back together virtually impossible. So the next step is going to be removing the float bowl, but first you're going to want to inspect this gasket here. This gasket is very, very important to your engines running properly. If it doesn't look 100%, you're going to want to replace it. So removing these screws can be difficult and you can see here that I'm struggling a little bit. I am using a flat head screwdriver because the Phillips portion of this screw was already damaged and I didn't want to end up stripping the screw out and having to drill it out. I've had to drill and tap carburetors in the past and although it's not impossible, it's not a very fun job. So after the bolts are fully removed, now just lift the float bowl off of the carburetor. There's a rubber gasket that goes around the outside edge. Just lift that off and set that aside. So this is the basic seal kit that you can buy for this engine and included is the float bowl seal and a couple small rubber seals that go on the jets and other various places. So the next step is going to be removing the carb float. So before we take it apart, we're just going to inspect it a little bit, see that it's moving up and down freely. But the one thing you're going to want to look for is to make sure that there's no cracks in this piece. If there's any cracks in it, then it will fill up with fuel and it will cause it to not float at the proper level. So to remove this float, there's just a small pin that you can pull out with some small needle nose pliers and then lift it straight out. Once you lift it out, you can inspect this float needle, make sure that everything is moving freely and the little rubber piece at the bottom doesn't look damaged or nothing um, is out of the ordinary. Now you can adjust the float height on these carburetors and to be honest, I don't know what the specs are for the proper float height. However, I've never had to adjust it, <clears throat> but I'm certain that a quick Google search would be able to turn up the proper float height and how to adjust that setting. I'm not going to be going into depth on how to do that in this video. So 
So the next thing we're going to be looking at is the main jet. So in the Honda parts manual, they show three different size jets for this main jet. It's going, the jet that you need is going to depend on your elevation. So you can see here that this main jet is a little bit stripped from it being taken on and off so many times. You want to be very careful with this, but the hole in this jet is not very small and I can already see that it's not clogged and shouldn't be a problem. So I'm not going to take it out again and risk damaging it again. So you can see here I'm struggling with this top cap which holds the other jets into place and you'll see here in a minute that I actually really struggled to get this top cap out. I went to get a short stubby flathead screwdriver and put a decent amount of pressure and leverage on it and still I wasn't able to get it with this screwdriver. These pieces are very soft and they can strip out very easily. I'm actually kind of surprised that I didn't do more damage to it struggling with it as I did so I shut the camera off and went to get a little bit bigger screwdriver and with a little bit of patience I was able to break it free So the next thing we're going to remove is the jet set. Basically the nozzle on the top and the uh, jet shaft that goes down through the center of the carb. So to remove this, what we do is take a flathead screwdriver and there's a rubber O-ring that just has a pressure fit and the bottom of the jet has a little flange on it and put the flathead underneath the flange and just release the pressure from that rubber O-ring. And we're gonna flip the carb over and the, the jet set should fall out. So there's two pieces. The larger piece is the jet nozzle and then the center piece is the jet itself. So pay particular attention to the orientation of this nozzle to the jet. You want to make sure that you don't put it back upside down like I just did there. Make sure that the tapered end goes towards the top. If you flip it around, the cap that I struggled to remove just a moment ago, it will not go in. So this jet, I believe, is called the slow jet. It's not what is called in the Honda manual. However, this little piece here is likely to be the culprit of much of the running issues that you may experience. So the orifice in these jets is microscopic, and you can't even barely see it here in the video, but there's a little hole in the center of this shaft. So the first time I did a carb job, this piece was cracked and I didn't even see it. You may need a magnifying glass to inspect it properly. Um, but if you're doing this carb job for the first time and you're having running issues, I would just suggest replacing them. These jets are probably the most expensive part of doing the carb job. But if you want the boat to run right, I would suggest just replacing it. Um, these are new because I did this job a couple months ago, so I'm just going to clean them out with some carb cleaner, replace the O-ring, and put it back together. So now that I have everything out of this carb, I'm going to clean the internals and all the little passages with some carb and choke cleaner. So this stuff is no joke and you really don't want to get it on your hands, you don't want to get it in your face, etc. I didn't have any rubber gloves, so I'm not going to do a super thorough job, but I'm going to move it down to the floor here and I have my little pancake air compressor set up that I can use to blow some air through and make sure that there's no blockages in the carb. So now I'm going to start reassembling the carburetor. So the first thing I'm going to do is at the bottom of the float bowl, there's a flathead, um, it's a float bowl drain where you can drain the fuel out of the bottom of the carburetor. So on that, um, that screw, there's a rubber seal and I just needed to take a razor blade in order to get it off. And then I'm going to take the small gasket that came with the kit 
and put it onto that screw and reinsert it back into the float bowl. So next we're going to replace the small o-ring that's on the end of this slow jet and you can see here that my o-ring was actually broken. This is not supposed to be two pieces. It looks like the outer edge of the rubber o-ring just kind of separated itself from the main uh, o-ring. So I'm just going to cut that out with a razor blade real quick and then find the correct o-ring from the o-ring gasket kit and replace that on the slow jet. So the o-ring kit comes with a third o-ring. It's a little bit larger and to be honest with you I'm not a hundred percent where this o-ring goes but I believe it's on the bottom of the air fuel mixture ratio screw, but I had these carbs um, tuned at a local shop where they balance the carburetors for me. So I am not going to touch that air fuel mixture ratio screw. Um, if you know that yours have been messed with, then these carburetors will, will need to be balanced and that as well could be causing some of your running issues if you are experiencing issues. So I'm getting ready to put this jet set back. This is the main nozzle. And remember the orientation of how this needs to go. The tapered end needs to go towards the top. It goes without saying, inspect this nozzle as well. The or orifices in this jet are larger and it's not likely that this will be damaged. But if you notice that it is, you can replace it I'm just putting a little bit of carb cleaner in it and cleaning this out for good measure, but I could see visually that there was no issues with it. So now I'm just making sure the orientation of the nozzle is correct. Again, with the tapered portion towards the top. The piece with the flange is going to be the bottom and the thinner piece of the jet is going to go towards the top. So now we're just going to drop it down in there and the nozzle itself will help to keep that jet perpendicular to where it needs to be. So I didn't show this very well in this video and I apologize, but when you put the jet back down um, into the carburetor, just make sure that the jet centers itself and you don't pinch the O-ring or anything like that. So this cap here will actually, when it's tightened down, will put enough pressure on the o-ring to push the jet and to seat it into place so you don't want to over tighten this it actually will only go a certain point but once that's tightened down it will push the jet down secure the o-ring and this part this portion will be complete so now we're getting ready to reassemble the float bowl and the float so one thing to pay particular attention to is this float bowl gasket and you'll notice that the bottom of it is flat in the top of it has a radius. You wanna make sure that the flat piece goes down on the float bowl like this and seats in the place and you want the radius to be sitting a little proud from the bowl itself so that it creates a seal. It might be tricky that when you flip this upside down to put it back on the carb, this seal might wanna fall off. So just make sure that you don't pinch it. But first, we're going to put this float back in. So gently make sure that the needle goes back uh, into place uh, the way that it came out. And then we're going to put the pin in to secure the hinge mechanism into place. And it doesn't want to go in this way. So I'll turn it around and try to um, insert the pin from the other direction and that seemed to work might be just a little bit of a burr on the other side of that aluminum so once you have that in place just check that the float is moving freely the needle is moving up and down freely you don't notice anything out of the ordinary and should be good to go 
All right, so now we're going to put the float bowl back onto the carb itself. So this is the tricky part. When you flip this over, this gasket may want to fall out. It should be pressure fit enough in there to hold itself into place, but you might find that a little bit of grease on here will, will be enough just to hold it in place. But you want to pay very particular attention that when you do flip this over, if it falls out of place, and it falls out of that channel and then you go to tighten it down, it's going to pinch the gasket between the carb and the, the float bowl. And that's not good because you could damage the gasket. So take your time putting this back together. Make sure that when you flip it over, everything looks okay. You'll probably notice that if it did fall out of place that this bowl will be out of alignment and it'll be a little bit high on one side or the other. So once you're confident that the float bowl is in place and the gasket's not pinched, you can go ahead and install the four screws back into the carb and tighten it down. Just do it little by little, alternating corner to corner, just to secure it down um, and be being cautious not to tweak it one way or the other. Um, be careful here not to strip them out again. And remember, tight is tight. Don't have to over tighten it. So that's it, that wraps up everything. We replaced, checked all the gaskets, seals, O-rings, jets, cleaned out all the fuel passages. And to be honest with you guys, this is probably the fourth time I've done this on this engine. So my advice is to only run non-ethanol gas. Do not use pump gas in these carbs or you will be doing this over and over and over again. I appreciate you watching. If you like this sort of video, be sure to subscribe and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks guys.